He's a member of the Patriots All-Decade Team for the 1990s. Our good friend Ted Johnson joining us this morning on the show. Teddy J, how you doing, buddy? BA, I am doing great, buddy. It's uh, great to catch up with you, bud. It's been a while. Um, you know, I moved back to I moved back to your old stomping grounds, man, and uh, uh, back in Boston now. So I'm uh, thrilled to be back in Boston uh, doing some radio here and having uh, having a good time, man. But it's really good to catch up with you today. You too, my man. Yeah, I see you're already making headlines. That didn't take long. <laughs> it didn't take long. You know. I just, the thing of it is, I just, I'm too honest sometimes. I just tell exactly how I feel, and that gets me in trouble, I guess, sometimes. I guess, <laughs> but you know what? It's refreshing because I think it's so easy for those within the Patriots family to protect everything Patriots. You guys have had so much success. Everybody that's played there has had so much success for 20 years, but you were honest in hearing Tom Brady's commentary about preparing his brain to absorb hits mm -hmm. or to be healthier. And you said it made me throw up in my mouth a little bit. You said it was irresponsible. What about Brady's comments did you find irresponsible? Yeah, well, the, th the thing is about with Tom, he's, he's you know, there was there was a time not that long ago where, you know, T Tom Brady's got a, you know, they call it the TV 12 method. He's got a big shop there in, in uh, Patriot Place, and he's written a book about different things that he does and techniques and, strategies that he uses to keep himself in, the, in, in great shape. And, uh, you know, he's, he has made claims that he has, you know, developed water and he has sold a, a water uh, in the past. It was claims to either have repaired, uh, you know, your brain from concussions or was to help prevent it. Um, that water is now not being sold uh, by Tom anymore. Uh, he recently made a, he had an interview with, with Jim Gray where he said that his brain was wired for contact. And it just made me cringe a little bit because it, it, it just – it's a little bit, uh, I think, misleading, D.A., uh, to say things like that. Unless you have medical journals, you have researchers, you have doctors, scientists that back up your theory, that will validate it, that will say this is absolutely true and people need to uh, maybe, uh, you know – Take it seriously, but he doesn't. He he didn't. He didn't have that. It's just him saying that his brain is wired for, for contact, and it makes it feel as if he's you know, uh, his brain is maybe different or special than the than everybody else's. And I just made the reference to, you know, you wonder what Junior Seau's family thinks about that, or Kevin Turner's family thinks about that, or what does Steve Gleason think when he hears those types of comments? Um, Andre Waters, Justin Strelznyk, Mike Webster. What do those guys think? and their families think uh, when they hear those kinds of things. And so I just feel like it's a little bit irresponsible for Tom to say that, um, a little bit misleading because a lot of people care what Tom has to say. And so just somebody that's gone through that, I felt like it was a little bit uh, out of lines for him to say that. Now, do I think he meant any, you know, anything, uh, you know, uh, by it? Maybe he didn't, maybe he wasn't thinking uh, about uh, those guys and, and when he was talking about it, probably not. But he needs to start thinking about that because there's a lot of guys that are suffering in silence and dealing with a lot of, you know, uh, issues from concussions from playing football. So it's just something that I'm very, uh, you know, emotional about going through it myself. And so I just wish Tom would think about it a little bit more before he says things like that. Yeah, you've gone through it yourself. You've also been open and honest about the research that you've done and players you've played with. You've spoken publicly and done research about Junior Seau and what he was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So this is a deeply personal thing for you, and that's why I'm sure it really struck a chord with you when Tom said what he did, right? That's it. That's it. That's all it is. I mean, you, you talk about the what's the one thing that uh, will get my dauber up faster than anything and it's talking about concussions in a way uh that where you're ill-informed where you don't know and you know, and i hate to say it but sometimes you just have to you know you have to kind of walk a mile in a guy's shoes before you you really should make comments about that and and i and i a lot of times it's it's guys that play positions that uh you know where their job description isn't maybe to initiate contact in every place for instance not every job uh, you know, not every position in the NFL is created equal. And I'll, I'll put it in terms of baseball terms, okay? So if you got two guys that played baseball, one guy played second base for 10 years and one guy played catcher for 10 years, well, which guy's going to come out of the game, you know, with more physical ailments than the other guy? It's going to be the catcher. Well, it's the same thing in football. Even though the data might not back me up on this, um, I think it's very clear there's just certain positions where playing middle linebackers, safety in the box, offensive linemen, 
where your job is to initiate contact every single play, and your head is involved in the in the play every single time. Da, I made a living, and I made a ten year career off of using one technique that I was taught called stun and separate technique. And it was a way that you – is how I got off blocks to go make tackles. And I would use the butt of my forehead to stun the blocker. I'd put my, the butt of my forehead right under the chin of that guard or that tackle or that fullback coming to block me, and I'd put it right under his chin so his head would snap back. That's the stun part. And then when his head snaps back, I'd put my hands into his chest, into his breastplate, and that was the separate part. So stun, separate, good off and make plays. I made a living off of doing that. Well – all those hits, they add up to something. We know that now. And so um, that was my job was to initiate contact on every play. Wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, their, their job is to avoid contact every single play. So every position is a little bit different. And so I do cringe a little bit when I hear guys that play positions that maybe aren't as physical or their job description isn't to initiate contact talk about this issue because they, it's, it, you know, it's just obvious they haven't had the same amount of hits that guys have uh, at other positions. It's like, an, it's like miles on your car. It's an odometer, you know, and the more hits you get, uh, obviously the more problems guys can have. It's, there's no guarantee uh, that guys potentially can have later in life. Ted Johnson joins us, three-time Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots. How are you feeling? I'm good, buddy. I'm doing really good, you know, and here's the thing for me. I have found out my way to, uh, to kind of navigate my way through this. There's no real clear blueprint, DA. There's no like, hey, this is, these are the steps you take if you have post concussion syndrome or you're dealing with, uh, you know, if you're dealing with potentially CTE, you know, obviously CTE, uh, traumatic, uh, traumatic encephalopathy is not uh, something you can test for in the living. You have to be diagnosed post mortem. So, um, you, so you don't, the guys don't know uh, while they're alive if they do have it, but. Uh, the research shows that a lot of guys that have had histories of concussions that have died for various reasons, um, and they did autopsies on the brain, have shown that they have, they have uh, the brain disease, CT, that is linked to playing football and with getting hit a lot. Um, my blueprint for me, DA, work. Do not live a sedentary life. Get off your ass. Make sure you engage as much as you can. I try and eat as good as I can. I try and work out, uh, you know, six days a week. I really got to take care of my body, right? And so that's my blueprint. And whatever, whatever symptoms I might have, DA, if it's, if it's anxiety, a lot of guys become, have uh, social anxiety can develop from this, depression. Uh, they have issues with impulse, uh, outbursts, irritability, that kind of stuff. Treat those symptoms. And if it's a pharmaceutical way to do it, then you have to go do it that way. If it's a therapeutic way you have to do it, then go go to therapy. But a lot of these guys, much like the guys that come back from fighting the wars, they get TBI, traumatic brain injury. There's a lot of guys that come back from war. They have a lot of the same issues. They suffer in silence. They're, you know, the ego's too big. If, if Junior Seau, DA, would have come to me and talked to me before he took a, a gun and killed himself, I, don't, I think he can still be around today. I really do. So a lot of guys, they have too much pride to ask for help, and that's just the nature of, of, of combat, and that's the nature of playing football, I think, unfortunately. Ted Johnson joins us. Really poignant, poignant, very interesting conversation that we're having about brain trauma and CTE and the future of football players. So there's no easy way to pivot to the on-the-field stuff. It feels trivial at this point. But I do want to ask you about today's Patriots and Chargers game, and specifically Brady at the helm, because – there's been times this year where Tom Brady did look 42 years old. There's been times this year where Brady did not look 42 years old, specifically the last two games of the regular season. What was your thumbnail on the ups and downs of his play this year? And did you feel like age had something to do with it? I, I do, D.A., to some degree. And, and, and the age, the only part of the age where I feel like it, it, it factored in was when he felt pressure, okay? Pressure, Tom Brady handled pressure, blitzing packages, like as good as anybody has, okay, ever to play the game, all right? And I feel like this year it affected him a little bit, okay? Now, if, if you look at Peyton Manning's career, you look at Peyton Manning's career, when I would play Peyton Manning, DA, we never blitzed him, ever, ever, ever. He would make you pay. If you bring five or more guys, he's going to find the open guy and he's going to kill you, Okay. At the end of his career, in 2015, when he was playing for the Denver Broncos, 
you could blitz Peyton, and it rattled him. I mean, he was throwing off his back foot. He was spinning out of throws. He was a high, highly success rate getting to Peyton Manning versus the blitz. And that was at the very end of his career. Same thing when I played with Drew Blesso. I love Drew. Drew's my guy. But at the end of his career, he was thrown off his back foot a lot because of pressure. I just think there's something. It's an involuntary kind of thing. It gets to a point where, I mean, if you watch Eli Manning the last four or five years, uh, nothing's wrong with him. And he, he spins out of throws, and he goes down fast at the any first side of pressure sometimes. I think it's just a thing that comes with age. So that's, that's one thing I think that you can maybe point to when you look at Tom play this year. And the other thing is, too, Dave, he wasn't there for OTAs. He decided not to go to the voluntary uh, OTAs this year. That's going to have an effect on timing and just rhythm with the guys. Julian Edelman didn't play in the first four games this year, so he wasn't available to work with Tom in the first four games. They brought in Josh Gordon after, I think, week three or four of the season, tried to get him involved, and so uh, you know, so other guys had to take a back seat. So the really the passing game's just been disjointed. He hasn't had the receivers uh, and, the, and, and the offensive weapons that he's used to having. And then Gronk, man, the, one of the best to ever play the game. He just hasn't been himself, and he you know, he hasn't been. He, it took I think weeks eight, nine, or ten before he even got targeted in the red zone. So there's just all these other factors besides the age thing that I think have, that have influenced his play this year and maybe is the reason why his numbers are down or that you're seeing maybe him make more mistakes than he typically makes. Ted Johnson joining us this morning on the show, one of the all-time great Patriot linebackers, three-time Super Bowl champion. Teddy J, it is always awesome to catch up. I, I apologize for taking this long. That's on me, but we will do it more frequently, my man, and I'm so glad to hear that you're back in Boston in the Northeast and doing well. Yeah, you're one of my favorite guys. Don't ever hesitate to call me anytime, but I'd love to chop it up with you anytime, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Thanks, Teddy.